today on Voice of Restoration. Which children do you see who will dress and will put their boobs out? We don't want, we don't want a hijab. We don't want hijab. We don't want hijab. At least they cover themselves. Turn away from our wickedness and actively call on the name of the Lord. Turn our fights against the principalities and the powers that rule over this country. My problem is not with uh, Atiku or with Buhari and so on and so forth. My problem, because they are just agents in the hands of the principalities that rule Nigeria. Cut off the power of that principality. The agents become powerless. Where is the restrainer of evil in the land? That is the failure of the church. That is the challenge of the hour. Teaching us to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. This is Voice of Restoration, raising an army of true believers. This morning, the challenge. I thought we shall set the tone for these times. Come bless the Lord, O ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of our God. So lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord. There's a time to stand in the presence of the Lord, not to sleep, but to do the things that God has ordained and, come and asked of us to do. And these things, ever since Ecolobia, I don't remember the dates anymore, when the Lord began to open to me several things. I'd kind of shuddered and wondered, Lord, how do you deliver this to a people? How do you deliver this to a people? We have all been taught, and we have had it said, that God recognizes only three groups of people, or nations, as you might want to call them. In Exodus chapter 19, 5 and 6, the very first set and group of people that God chose for himself, now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that Moses was commanded to speak to the children of Israel. And this is God affirming something that he has set in place way back in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7, 8, and 9. When God divided the nations of the world in the days just after the flood of Noah, he said, I have divided the nations of the earth according to the numbers of the guardian angels that were in the council of God. But I have chosen Israel for myself. God chose Israel for himself as one nation. But thanks be to God, in his mercy and in his grace, when he sent Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary to be the propitiation for my sins and for yours, if you have accepted, to repent from your sins and turn away, as he declared unto, Mo, unto, unto Paul, Acts chapter 26, from verse 17 thereabouts, it began to say, Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I send you, right? To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified that by the faith that is in me. God cut out another group of people, another set of people, by the power of the blood, by the sacrifice, and by the call unto repentance. He called another set of people that declared in, in, I think it's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, where he said, But you are a chosen generation, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a holy a nation, peculiar people, a peculiar that people, that you should show forth the praises of Him oh, who has called you out of darkness. Can you see the similarity between the scripture life? and what you read in Exodus? That's exactly the same thing. 
that God put upon Israel, that God put upon the church, which is the other second nation. Amen? And everybody that is outside of that falls into the last group of nations, the heathen, the Gentiles. Amen? But what struck me, the other that the Lord began to open this to me, he said, why do you think I will meet a different standard of judgment upon two peoples that I have chosen to myself? Why would God meet a different standard of judgment upon Israel and not do exactly what he has done to Israel to the church? It will not be God. It will be unjust. It will be contrary to who he is. I'm leaning on to something. So that you understand the state, the situation that we are in in this country, those that are called the church. If the Lord said, he will cast Israel out, <laughs> a falling church deserves exactly the same thing. Amen? Let's not deceive ourselves. The things that we are going through as a country, the absolute responsibility of the church, so-called, in this nation. And if God casts Israel out, this same church, as he said concerning Laodicea, I will do what? I will spew you out. We hardly have come to terms with that as a church in this country. We hardly have come to terms with that. Just look at what the word of God says. As for rulers, as for people, exactly the same thing. Proverbs 29, it gives us certain clips from, Romans, from Proverbs 29 that defined the spectrum of rulers that have ruled over this nation. If you look at verse 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked does, when they do what? BRS rule, the people mourn. So if the people are mourning in this nation today, it is because who is ruling? Yes. Wicked rulers. If there is mourning in the land, in the degree and the extent that we are looking at today, it is because the rulers are wicked. That's what the word of God has said. You take another verse in that same chapter, because if you take time to take Proverbs 29 and go through several commentaries, you will understand that several things have been written in that chapter that have to do with rulership, that have to do with the things that are crucial for people to come to terms with if they want to stand under the favor of God. Yes, the next verse, verse 4. Verse four. The king by judgment establisheth the land. But he that does what? He that receiveth gifts overthroweth it. You call them by different names, but they are agents of Satan that have been recycled. You may call them by different whatever, ethnicity, religion, or whatever. By the standards of the word of God, under whatsoever name they are called, Hear it now. They are agents of what? Satan that are being recycled. And you all clap your hands. Oh, we want a different ruler and so on and so forth. You don't know nothing. And until you begin to come to terms with the word of God and the understanding that God has given us in these times and that's why we are going the direction which we are going in this fasting meeting, this is not a regular thing where people are coming to ask God for money and so on and so forth. I'm done with that. Later on, you will hear from me that poverty is a qualification for great, for great faith. It's not a disease. What did I say? Being poor. But the scriptures declare God has chosen the poor of this world to be what? To be rich in faith. And we deliberately throw away richness of faith in the struggle to say you want to be free from being poor. It's time that we began to say it the way it is. So that no one thinks that well is exempt from what God is talking about. God will not apply a different standard 
to the church different from what he did to Israel. And that was what he opened my eyes to see. That was the creation of the, the question, the challenge that every one of us we need to face as those who have understanding. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, because I, I'm, I just want to lay a foundation this morning in a way that all of us who get an understanding, we will prime our hearts to understand what God is demanding of us. What God is doing what? Demanding of us. And thou shalt not go aside from any words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left. To go after other gods to serve them. Because if you do, there are certain things that will happen to them. But I came to understand a principle of the living God, a principle that I summarized, strange for strange. Strange for strange. When you choose a strange God, I will give you up to a strange king. When you choose a strange God, I will give you up to what? A strange king. And that's the pattern that happened in Israel in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 20, to, verse 20 to verse 41. There you have the whole history of how Assyria, the Assyrian king he brought people from Assyria and planted them in Samaria and took people from Samaria and took them away to Assyria. And do you know what happens? The acts and the, and, the, and, and, and the character of the God of the Assyrians was now implanted where? In Israel. Because Israel chose to follow a strange God. But worse than that, by the time you get to that stage where God now gives you up to a strange king, you begin to speak their language. You lose the originality of whatever it is that you are. You are totally assimilated. And that's what Apostle John began to write about when he said, they speak the language of the world because they are what? Of the world. And that's what has happened to the church in Nigeria. The church in this nation, the church in this nation, Chose other gods. And as God said in Romans chapter 1, thereabouts in verse 38, he said, I gave you up. I gave you up to your strange desires. And I say on the authority of the word of God, except we call on the name of the Lord for a total repentance a calling of revival in the church that is in this land, all the nonsense that we are talking about in terms of proliferation of Islam is all in vain. Because we decided to follow American brand Christianity when they injected the level of prosperity according to the way of the world. Go back in history. We spoke about that. The level of horror that is going on in our country, particularly in so-called churches, if the accounts that we read in newspapers are true, you find a man who says he helped a man, another man, took him to Akure to go and get power. And when he got power and he began to attract a large crowd, the man now refused to help him and then he went to kill him. In the church. In the church. You read in the newspapers. An altar of this nature. And then they go underneath the altar. They find the skull of a human being. 
in the church. All for what? Fame, money, power, crowd. And I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to God that he warned me ahead. Dele was with me along with the Tokumo. Remember the day we went to Abeokota? And I greeted the people and the question that came was, what is the size of your church? For a moment, the question staggered me, but quickly the Holy Spirit came. Mine is a church without walls, which was the truth. The wall that you built all the way, all the way to East Africa. The church, the wall that you have taken all the way to West Africa. The wall that Okumu has taken all the way to South Africa. The wall that has gone all the way to the Middle East. Should we then begin to count by number? No, sir. Mali Kaboshi Santaria. But I must speak to you heart to heart because God's heart is bleeding. Worst things will befall the nation, this, this church. I'm not talking about this assembly now. Because the sacrifice of my Savior was not in vain. He will turn the church in Nigeria, he will turn it over to massive persecution, to shreds, if only to save the few that will awaken. In the place of meditation, I cried, I said, Lord, I don't know how bad Nineveh was. I cannot imagine the level of wickedness of Nineveh. But if in one day you could turn around Nineveh, then you can look upon us in mercy and turn us around. That's why we are praying. That's why we are calling on the name of the Lord. That's why we are charging ourselves in this short window that we have to turn things around. And the Lord does not move by numbers. It doesn't move by numbers. So if it's only four, if it's only me, and I can count on the commitment of those who stand with me, God's ears are not short that they cannot hear us. Neither is his arm shortened that he cannot deliver. The challenge, strength for strength, is what God will put as a judicial stamp upon everyone that he has called who goes after a strange God. God will also give you over to strange things, strange tongue, strange rulership. Romans chapter 1, 18 through to 26. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. excuse yeah. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness. God did what? Gave them up to uncleanness. God did what? Gave them up to uncleanness. Through, through the, the lust of, of their, their hearts. hearts. What's the lust of their hearts? Money. To be like the world. What's the lust of their hearts? To gather crowd. To build huge auditoriums. What is the lust of their hearts? Where are the people who are hungry for God? Where are those who understand the pain in the heart of God? Where are those who are prepared to run with God and do what it is he wants? I said it since the days that American brand Christianity
came into the church in this nation like Janice and Jambres. And you've heard me say it. Several things that I later on got to understand by way of study concerning these two men, Janice and Jambres. I'm going to say a few things concerning them. The Jewish records said those two men, Janus and Jambres, actually were the two magicians who had pre-warned Pharaoh before Moses was born. That there is a Hebrew child that is going to be born. They were responsible for what? For the harsh decree that came from the mouth of Pharaoh about the slaughtering of every male child. False men, false teachers, false carriers of anointing who will speak things. But what's more, they then began to imitate what these guys were doing with their enchantments, the works of Aaron and Moses, even though they were defeated. But what is worse? They said Moses performed these miracles with water and rod. Does that do this? We will also bring our own magic. And that's where I found the manner in which Neil Frisbee recorded is very, very interesting because it just perfectly shows the picture of what's going on in the church realms in this country. The name Jambres comes from the Aram Aramic word that says to oppose. To oppose. And the name Janus means to seduce and make rebellious. Thank God Jim Baker has repented. But he was one of those agents of Satan that Satan took advantage of. About largeness of the living that God has given to Christians and so on and so forth. They brought it and our people caught on unto it. Those of you who have not had a chance to read the book that was written by Papa Elton, on Papa Elton, I urge you, if you are in this race, get a copy. The Messenger. But it will give you a history of the church in this country. How this man, the moment when Benson began to go out of the way, he stood up to him. Don't go and copy America. Oh, God bless Benson. But I pray that the mercy of God would have spoken for him. Because Benson nurtured many of us. Along with Papa Elton, virtually every weekend, we ran wherever you had the time to spare. We went to Benin. Benin was the headquarters where we drank concerning the power of God and his word. If it was not Benin, it would be Elisha at the feet of the old man. Oh, glory be to God. Those days are returning for those who want to learn. When, they be when we began to move away, we began to move away. Servants of God, Many men that ran together with us, our names, I don't, I don't even want my name to be mentioned in any book, but we know them because we all started together. When that thing was injected, like a little leaven, it began to grow. And it has come to full cycle now. We see it all amongst us. Every corner, every corner, you see houses of illusion set up and people are willing to accept anything because they have never been taught the reality that you are complete in Christ. Your completion is not in how much money you have in your bank, nor the popularity that you enjoy, nor whatever it is. I have been blessed, but I have always known never for myself. And in the day that God, I, I pray that in the day that God will open the archives of heaven, He will stun you. We don't want to look more than this. With our Abada and my, I went to look for my old Alujon John Kinjo. Huh? 
That's what I've been wearing for days now. Going, but just to, 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 when I said to you, I'm a sign, you better understand what we are saying. God is determined to do it. And all I pray for is, Lord, don't let me be found wanting in this day of visitation. Janus and Jambres, they came into the assembly and it has come to full cycle. Not only until they were destroyed by the sword of Phineas, they also were in the mixed multitude that went out with a group that left Egypt. Oh, glory be to God. You need to go back for those of you who have not had occasion to listen to some of the ministrations of Pastor Dilly. And I'm going to give that illustration again. Many of you love football, right? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. When they are playing free kick, yes, huh? there is a wall. And it's only the team against whom they are playing that is in that wall? No. no. You have at least one or two that are from the opposing team. And when the ball is kicked, what do they do? That is through the hole by which the goal is caught. They entered. We accepted them. But they were the route by which the enemy has scored goals. I don't know if you understand me. You do? Oh, that God will grant us perception, discernment in this hour, to be able to understand those that do not belong and to move away from them. Praise the Lord. Move away from them. Point them out. Stand against them. It has come to that point now because the church is in jeopardy. Praise the Lord. I say these things to keep all of us alert, awake, perceiving of all the things that's happening amongst us. Because many are wondering, why is it this way with the church? And I'm showing you why it is this way with the church. And I'm also showing what needs to be done. Praise the Lord. God created the church for a purpose. Ephesians 3.10 Always, always, always I have dwelt on this to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known through the church. What? The manifold wisdom of God. Who is going to show the manifold wisdom of God to the principalities? Huh? The church. And I will not, I'll make you to see why he spoke about principalities. Because principalities, they rule over the affairs of men. Those are the guardian angels, the guardian members of God's divine counsel that are referred to in, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, 8 and 9, that have responsibility. The challenge of the hour is who understands and who is going to stand against principalities in the times in which we are. But the church doesn't understand that it's not warring against flesh and blood. The church doesn't understand that it is neither Buhari, nor, nor Jonathan, nor Basojo, who have come, they are thieves, they are liars. Agents of darkness in the hands of principalities. Whereas the church that God has called, he said, to the intent that now unto principalities and past in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. And I hope when we get into the prayer sessions, you will understand why we are talking about the things we are talking. Amen? Exactly the same scripture 
is what God said concerning Israel. That Israel was going to be the model that the nations of the world, they will walk and say, mm, indeed you are a special people. But we are doing the opposite. We want to look like the world. We want to dress like the world. We want to sing like the world. We want to be like the world. That's not what God called us to be. Amen? Are you with me? Do you understand? And <laughs> when I looked at the world and I saw the things that the word of God was saying about the way the church had gone and so on, then I understood the things that were written by Apostle John. I'll take 1 John chapter 3, the first two verses, and then 1 John chapter 4. Because it's good for us to put these things together and understand where we are. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, yes. that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not. Stop. You are called who? Son of God. Will the world recognize you? Then, if the scripture says the world will not recognize me, why are you making efforts to make the world recognize you? Huh? Why are you making efforts to make the world recognize you? Why do you want to be like the world? When I have been told already, as a son of God, the world will not do what? The world will not recognize me. Yes? And why would the world not recognize him? Because it knew him not. Because the world never recognized Jesus. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. Glory to Jesus. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 4. 1 John 4, verse yes. 4. Yes. Ye are of God, little yes. children. Yes. And have overcome them. Yes. Because greater is he that is in you mm -hmm. than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. They are of the world. Oh, those who ate of the apple of strange, boundaryless prosperity, they speak the world. Therefore, the world does what? Heareth the them. I don't think you got that. They are of the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. Therefore. And the world heareth them. They speak of the world and the world does what? Yeah. The world listens to them. We are of God. Mm -hmm. He that knoweth God heareth us. Ah. He that is not of God heareth not us. I'm doing the best to show you the distinction of the house within the house. And encouraging you to understand what has been spoken concerning you and define the boundaries within which you want to be. You have no basis to want to be like the world. And when I read of the admonitions of Apostle James and Apostle Peter, when he said, We wrote to those who are in that diaspora, and you look at the commentary in the scriptures. Those who were in diaspora were the people in Cappadocia. They were the people in all the countries that are now Turkey. So the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Asia, and Bithynia. Go and look in the map. That was Turkey for you. Then everything that I have said should sink in home to you. That this place where the world of God was sent, where the people went to live, all of a sudden, their language changed. They became assimilated. Turkey today is what? And I, I see stupid posts. Oh, Nigeria is going to become like Turkey. So, if Nigeria becomes like Turkey, who is the cause of it? Thank you, son. If Nigeria becomes like Turkey, it is us. Because God will not judge us with a standard different from the way he has judged Israel. Because in the same way as God chose Israel, God 
chose the church. And until the church returns to God in repentance, recognizes the way in which we have failed God, the way in which we have walked contrary to God, the way in which we have taken full bloom, drunk from the cup of Babylon, except we return to God, then all the noise we are making is all just noise. And that is the challenge. Amen? We cry about Islamic proliferation, but we fail to reflect on what has brought us to this place of impotence. Did you know what happened in the days of the believers? Do you know what happened in their days? Keeping that scripture in Hebrews. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. Now. Wrought righteousness. They wrought, when he says they wrought righteousness, said they ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. The message of that same portion, it says they did what? They toppled kingdoms. How? Made justice work took the promises for themselves. Cherubiko. Through acts of faith, they did what? Through talking? Through carrying protests? Through acts of faith, they toppled kingdoms? They made justice work? They took the promises for themselves? They were protected from lions, yes? Fires. And sword, sword thrust. Turned disadvantage to advantage. Won battles. Routed alien armies. Through what? Faith. Through what? Faith. Through what? Acts of faith. Shouldn't we return to faith? Shouldn't we stop our excesses and live the way God wants us to live? They can carry all the protests that they want to carry. But you know better if you will wake up from your slumber and return to God. Return to God with all your heart. Return to God with all that is in you. Women received their loved ones back from the dead. There were those who under torture refused to give in and go free, preferring something better, resurrection. Others braved abuse and weeps and yes, chains and dungeons. We have stories of those who were stoned, sawed in two, murdered in cold blood. Stories of vagrants wandering the earth in animal skins, homeless, friendless, powerless. The world did not deserve the them. The world did not deserve them. Making their way as best they could on the cruel edges of the world. Glory to Jesus. And we all want to be like the world. And if we don't wake ourselves up, how do you say it? The, the koboko is hidden somewhere that will whip those that belong to God. Not all. Not all. To shape. Praise the Lord. Then I understood it's this scripture that kicked off James 2.5 in, in, in my spirit. When God said, Hark in my brethren, has not God Hath not God, has not God done what? Chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom. God chose who? The poor of this world. And then nobody wants to be poor. But through acts of faith, through acts of faith, through acts of faith, and understand me so that I don't go out there and begin to say something else. I have said it to you, I've shown it to you that anyone who has a roof over the head, who has food to eat and clothes on his back, is not a poor person. You are looking for what God has not said you should look for. Ngwan. We run after the things. 
that do not make for life. Has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and then what? Heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those that love him. So anyone operating outside this dynamic haze of the world, you are not looking for the kingdom. You are looking for something else. We speak these things because we recognize that a change of cycle has come. A change of cycle has come that we need to understand what God is saying. Are we prepared for such a life as this? Is the church in Nigeria prepared for such a life as this? Are the people being taught things that are written in the world? Are they aspiring for the things that make for the kingdom? That is the challenge. Praise the Lord. Can we do as the apostles did? Who subjected themselves to persecution? When they were taken, they returned to their company. And they prayed. And the Holy Ghost came upon them. And they were renewed and re-energized in power. You know, I took time to go back. Supernatural things, they begin to happen when the people return to the path of the eternal God. When Herod had put Peter inside the cell, waiting for an appropriate time to do what? To kill him. Peter was already resigned to it. The guy was sleeping. What happened? I can't hear you. What happened? The angel came, caught the doors, gate one, gate two, gate three. Peter was still sleeping. Had to slap him. Wake up. The man was dreaming. And it took him out. Has that God changed? No, sir. Did God not demonstrate to the Pharisees and the Sadducees? They had put the apostles, they had put them inside the jail. And God sent an angel and opened the jail and they were out preaching. Right? Yes. Supernatural things began to go after them. They never prayed for it. Too. Did they pray? Did you read in the scriptures that they prayed for it? They simply stuck to the principles of the eternal God. It was God's responsibility to defend them. That was the first case in Acts chapter 4. You saw the second case in the case of Peter. You saw the third case in the case of Paul and uh, Silas. All of them kept in the, in the dungeon and so on and so forth. Yet God raised up angels. Oh boy. And do you know what? The angel that turned Peter loose. In that same chapter, by the time that Herod came and people were hailing. hailing him, the scripture said God sent what? God sent worms to smite him. Who is prepared to face the challenge? Praise the Lord. Acts 5, 17 through to 21. Acts 8, 26. Acts 12, 1 through 11. Acts 16, 25 through to 39. These are the things, the examples that I've just given you now of God's intervention when the people begin to do what God wants. Amen? Amen. Look at the man Daniel. And I'm still speaking concerning what the Nigerian church needs to return to. This man understood the season, the change of cycle that was upon his land. I understood by the books. The number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Mm. And I set my face unto the Lord. That's Lord. my emphasis. 
to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth and ashes. Yes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. That is where the church needs to go back to. Daniel was a perfect example of how God changes nations. Amen? You may not have read it through, but you will see the connection, connecting lines. In Daniel chapter 10, again, you will see what was said concerning him. In those days, I, Daniel, was what? Morning, Morning three, three full, full weeks. weeks. Now, so people, have, people who have tried to translate that in different ways, oh, it was not, it was not full-time fasting. It was uh, fruit fasting. I was not there. But the scripture tells me the man was mourning. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine into my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself for 21 whole days. Yes? And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, mm. as I was by the side of the great river, which mm. is Hedekel, yes. then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen, mm. whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz, his body also was like the burial, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, where a great quaking fell upon it's them. It's what the man told Daniel that I want, that I want us to get to. And he said unto me, O mm. Daniel, mm. a man greatly beloved, yes. understand the words that I speak unto thee, mm. and stand upright. Mm. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Mm. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And the very come. day that the man started chastening himself, confessing his sins, confessing the sins of his people, that same day, his voice was what? Was heard. God, who is the head of all principalities, he raised an angel up, carried the answer to Daniel. And the opposer also came to withstand him. The things that are happening here are occasion first where. And by the time you get through that scripture, he said, Michael came to break the deadlock so that the answer will get to Daniel. But when, that, when I have given you the answer, I'm going back to do what? To continue I'm fight. going back to finish the fight. And when I have vanquished the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece will come. How did change happen? By voter's card? Yeah. Do you understand me? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, that's what Paul understood when he wrote in Ephesians 6 what I've just quoted to you. So get your voters card, but I can tell you the place where the battle is won, first of all, absolute repentance and crying to God that God will break the hold of the prince that rules over Nigeria. Did you hear me? Total and absolute repentance. For me, for every one of us, as perfect, as excellent as we will say the character of Daniel was, he confessed the sins along the sins of the people. And the scripture said to us, the very day that you began to speak, everyone heard, everyone sent help. The opposers in the heavenly places, they gathered, but God broke them, and a change happened. 
Because by the time you will hear of his nest, it was Alexander who had now taken over. It's up to you. It's up to me. But I since got to understand. Ah. Oh, we were crying, Abacha, go, Abacha, go, Abacha, go, Abacha, went. And then you had Abdul Salami. Abdul Salami went. Obasanjo came. Obasanjo went. A lame dog president, Yaradua came. And things continued to go worse and worse and worse. Ah uh ah. -uh. You can't, can't you, you not, you not get sense? You not understand that I, what is behind six is more than seven. How long will it take us to understand? How long will it take us to understand? To do what is right. Turn away from our wickedness and actively call on the name of the Lord. Turn our fights against the principalities and the powers that rule over this country. My problem is not with uh, Atiku or with Buhari and so on and so forth. My problem, because they are just agents in the hands of the principalities that rule Nigeria. Cut off the power of that principality. The agents become powerless. Oh, that we will do what is right. The dynamics of changing leadership and the people that rule, God brought it to light with the case of Daniel. And we need to understand that as a church in this country to turn from our wickedness because the church is truly wicked. The church, truly wicked. Every man that refuses the instructions of the eternal God to live by it is a wicked person. 